Back in 1919, an amateur licensed radio station called 8ZAE operated experimentally on one of the upper floors of the Doubleday Hill Electric Company store in downtown Pittsburgh. The store sold radio components. And when its salespeople wanted to give a prospective customer a demonstration to spark the sale, they just ran upstairs and turned on the station. Well, two years later, in January 1921, Pittsburgh listeners heard the call letters KQV on their crystal sets for the first time. These call letters, officially designated by the federal government a year later, inaugurated one of the world's first commercial broadcast services. Well, not quite, because KQV founder G. Brown Hill didn't think radio should be a commercial enterprise and refused to accept commercials until 1925. How times have changed. See how Oxidol washes clothes white for life. Over the years since then, KQV has meant many things to many Pittsburghers. Early on in the 30s and 40s, KQV had live musical shows and was a full-time affiliate, first with NBC's Blue Network, later with Mutual, carrying daytime soap operas, nightly drama and comedy shows, and network newscasts in addition to its local news. And now to the editorial room of the Jergens Journal and Walter Winchell. Good evening, Mr. Mr. North American. All the ships at sea. Let's go to press. In the 50s, 60s, and the early 70s, KQV was the cock of the walk in rock. It was Pittsburgh's DJ Fast Track, showcased on the ground floor of the Chamber of Commerce building at the corner of Walk and Don't Walk. Dave Scott, Chuck Brinkman, Hal Murray, Harry Marshall, Gary Gears, all household names. And remember Jeff Christie back in the 1970s? 9.03 at 14K on the award-winning Jeff Christie Rock and Roll Radio Show. With fun and frolic for all. Some of you, no doubt, still wondering what award I have won. I'll tell you, none other than the Marconi Award for excellence in broadcasting. He changed his name back to Limbaugh. We hear he finally did win that Marconi Award this year. Then... The music stopped on October 15, 1975. This is KQV Pittsburgh, WJV 34 and WJV 35. Bye-bye. This is radio station KQV in Pittsburgh. Good morning and welcome to Pittsburgh's first all-news radio station. Just like that, KQV became all-news as a charter affiliate of NBC Radio's newly launched news and information service. The station's owner, Taft Broadcasting, hoped that Pittsburghers would quickly recall that KQV's history included a rich legacy as a highly respected radio news and information source because of its illustrious list of news and sportscasters. KQV News Director Herb Morrison, who earlier had made radio journalism history at Lakehurst Airport in New Jersey. And there were others. Louis L. Kaufman, midday newscaster. Bill Burns, later to become Pittsburgh's best-known TV news anchor. Al Julius and sports director Pi Trainer, Pittsburgh Pirate Hall of Fame third baseman. While wishing the station's all-news venture well, most media observers predicted that it wouldn't last more than a year or so. Well, they were half right. Within months, NBC realized its version of all-news was too expensive and announced it was pulling the plug, which it did in early 1978. I was firmly convinced that uh, all-news would make a go of it here. And so when uh, when NBC's News and Information Service uh, dumped out, uh, rather than go to music or something else, uh, we decided to keep going as an all-news station. Most of the network's affiliates changed their programming formats immediately, but KQV did not. Instead, it redesigned its news format, strengthened its local news staff, and affiliated with the unmatched news and information resources of CBS Radio. Mutual, and the Wall Street Journal Networks. And the Pittsburgh Radio News Watch kept on ticking. But it almost stopped again in 1982. Taft determined that the all-news format was too expensive and told General Manager Bob Dickey to change it or else. I was firmly convinced then, and still am, that Pittsburgh uh, could support an all-news station. As one of the original designers and managers of all-news radio, Dickey didn't want to change it, so he opted for the or else instead by persuading publisher Richard Scave to buy the station. And they rewound the KQV News Watch, which has never stopped since. They both believed that their native Pittsburgh needed and deserved an all-news radio service. 
and that the community would support it. And thanks primarily to the advertising support of many of you who are here this evening, KQV is one of only a handful of all news radio stations left in America today. Since 1982, we've added the additional vital news and information services of CNN Headline News, Metro Traffic Service, and the Weather Channel. We've been very blessed. We've had many long-term advertisers who have stuck with us uh, over the years. And we've moved. After more than 50 years in the Chamber of Commerce building, KQV is now headquartered across the street in Center City Tower with a fully computerized newsroom and on-site state-of-the-art satellite links for network and wire service affiliates. The radio broadcast industry is famous or infamous for its frequent changes. Since 1975, 20 years ago, most of Pittsburgh's commercially licensed radio stations have changed their call letters, formats, management, and staffs, some of them many times. All the while, we have remained KQV All News. The most important, KQV has kept much of its management and staff. In fact, five members of the original KQV All News team are still here. And two-thirds of the KQV management staff has been here 18 years or longer. In today's news environment, traveling the electronic information superhighway has all but made roadkill of much of the working press. However, KQV's experienced and tenured news staff has provided the essential dimensions of history and experiences to keep world and local news in perspective. A lot of important events have happened in our news world since 1975, and KQV News Radio has been here throughout to tell Pittsburghers the who, what, when, where, why, and how of these happen. With your continued encouragement and support, we pledge to continue to do what we do best in the next 20 years. There are virtually stories generated every day, and so we have a lot of grist for our mill. And uh, the thing we're going to try to do over the next 20 years is to do a little better. Thank you from all of us at PQV.